If you're craving a deeply emotionally connected relationship with a man you respect and admire, but for reasons that elude you, it hasn't happened yet, today I'm gonna to show you a better way to attract him and have him feel super inspired to be with you without forcing, chasing, or pressuring him and while simultaneously growing in confidence and in worth. Since you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you're craving a form of love that transcends the mundane. A relationship that is emotionally, physically, spiritually extraordinary. Maybe the feeling of being seen, respected, understood, uplifted by a man who also inspires you to be better. And if that's the case and you haven't had the experience that you want, my guess is you may be doing lots of things that don't hit the nail on its head and that make a little bit of movement and sometimes running around in circles without giving you the biggest bulk of transformation that you're seeking. So some of the things that I'll share with you today might not sound Cosmo Magazine exciting enough. They may not be flashy, but I'm telling you after helping hundreds of women around the world with different love challenges, different age groups, different sizes and colors of skin and different fears that this stuff actually works because it reaches the foundation of what actually creates that polarity, that dynamic, that feeling of enthusiasm and passion and inspiration where a guy can connect with you, doesn't know what hit him, doesn't know what punch him in the heart, in the head, but feels the need to move forward, feels the need to pursue you, feels the need to find an excuse to spend time with you. What you want is to be so strong in your being that you're able to create this kind of response from someone. The first thing that needs to happen for you to do this in a way that feels fulfilling instead of painful is you need to stop telling yourself that you're late to the game. Now I know it's hard, especially if you compare yourself consciously or subconsciously to your friends who may be married, may have children, may be in what you consider great relationships to feel like you're being left out that there's something wrong with you, that you haven't, if you had done things differently, that you wouldn't be where you are right now. But the biggest sense of movement can come from you recognizing that you either believe that things happen for a reason or you don't. You can't tell your friends when they go through pain, this is happening for a reason, but when something's happening to you, forget your own advice. The spiritual path of growing into a relationship is understanding that there might be a very powerful reason, beneficial to you and your relationship, why this hasn't happened yet. And the sooner you embrace that possibility, the sooner you embrace that there's lessons you're learning right now that are going to save you from potential pain in the future, that you are becoming, if you choose to, a better lover, that you'll be able to be more gifted than the relationship you step into, that maybe because somebody did it sooner, they may not have been as wise or as knowledgeable about what they want. So they may be facing some pains that you will avoid by waiting longer. You just assume that there's something that's happening for you right now instead of to you and you embrace the spiritual lessons that you learn and you choose right now to view your path as the right path for you. Number two, and this is so basic, but so few people actually do this that it's scary to think that they may want to experience a relationship without having done this step. And that is you need to learn to forgive yourself. Every single day, moment by moment, decision by decision, you need to learn to forgive yourself for not having done certain things, for having made some mistakes, for having royally messed up in some ways, for having hurt people along the way. It doesn't mean that you don't learn from it. it, doesn't mean that you have no remorse, it just means that you choose to stop hurting yourself. And some of the most practical ways for you to stop hurting yourself and to start forgiving yourself is you eliminate consciously as a decision the words should and shouldn't from your vocabulary and from your thoughts. So instead of saying, I should have never met this guy, or I should have never paid attention to him, or I should have listened to my intuition, I should have asked or set this question or set this boundary. You say, I didn't know any better, so I did the best I could, but guess what? Now, next time this, I connect with someone, I'll ask this question. Next time I feel an intuition about something, I'll listen to it. That's the kind, generous, beautiful, self-loving approach you can take that will eliminate the pain, the anguish, the fear, the insecurity, sometimes the shame that comes from a past that isn't perfect. Guess what? The guy you're connecting with doesn't have a perfect past either. So the more you embrace that your imperfect nature is part of the thing that he'll enjoy and connect with, 
because he'll give him permission to be imperfect because he will see vulnerability in you that he wants to step into and help in some way in a graceful a kind way then you're on the right path the best way to look at this is if you have a child that you love with all your heart and your child just learned how to walk and falls in front of you, there's, there's something genuinely wrong with your psychology. You wouldn't slap the child in the head and say, you're doing it wrong, stand up and just go for it. You would basically say, hey, we've got this. Grab the child by the hand, embrace him if the child is crying and say, let's do this again. Same thing with you. you need to treat yourself the way you would treat a child you love with your whole heart. Third step, fall viscerally in love with your own life. Think about it this way. If you are the kind of human being who is genuinely excited to be here, who sure has challenges and problems and things in her past that are not great, but is fundamentally looking at the possibilities, who's foundationally doing things that make her feel excited and joyful and alive and grateful to be here, who doesn't want to be around someone like that? Taking the extra step, instead of saying a glass half full or half empty, it's not only is it half full, but it's you're grateful there's even a glass to begin with. You're grateful to be in a space in your life where you can touch, you can feel, you can sense. We're here in this brief span of time to make something magical happen. Think about it, you could be a cloud, you could be a star, you could be the silent, empty void in the universe and you're a human being with a beating heart who's here for a brief amount of time to love, to give, to explore, to share, to cry, to evolve. You fall in love with your life by doing the things that make you feel completely alive. You learn to connect to gratitude. That's the biggest practice that can allow you to attract more men to your life than any stupid technique you could try. Feel more grateful for what you have. Be the kind of human being that foundationally connects to the truth of who she is. And when you engage in conversations with people, that's something that can be felt from miles away. That aura of excitement, that radiance that comes from you falling in love with this experience of being here as imperfect and as painful as it might be, it's unique and it's yours and it's once in a lifetime, that type of human being creates a strong resonance with others around them. Now, if you're a single woman watching this, I would love to share with you the number one reason you're still single. It's not the symptom that you might be connected with. And if you want to find what that reason is, I've taken lots of years of helping women find love, understood the blind spots, and I'm willing to share them with you in 60 seconds. All you have to do if you want to find the answer to the question, why am I still single? Go to the first link in the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and you'll receive two things. The answer to the question, why you're still single, and also a report that will share with you the number one thing you can do today based on your specific blind spot to turn things around far more quickly than your current trajectory. Step number four is something so simple but so powerful, which is be 1% more filling the blank. And I'll share more examples with you in a second. But instead of doing so much, instead of forcing yourself to do certain things to attract men, I'm not saying don't go to places, I'm not saying don't connect with people, I'm saying be more than do. So be 1% more radiant, 1% more flirty, 1% more confident, 1% more sensual, 1% more alive, 1% more heartfelt, 1% more compassionate, 1% more worthy when you set a boundary. When you can focus on something as simple as, can you do 1% more flirtiness? You can. Can you do 1% more aliveness? You can. It's something so simple. Imagine you doing this through six months. 1% more through six months, that's 180 degree shift in your experience. And here's the best news. You don't need a 180 degree shift in your experience to get what you want. Sometimes a 10 degree shift gets you what you want. Sometimes a 15 degree shift gets you what you want. My recommendation is adopt this stance for the next 30 days. Try it for yourself. And if they work for you, continue going for them. If they don't work for you, you can always go back to your old strategy. But you know that strategy isn't working right now. So we're taking the power back and focusing on things that are within your control, within your being, that you can put out there and create a much stronger feel of vibration, resonance, excitement. It's that unquantifiable thing that guys feel in their heart that makes them go from she's great to she's great and I want to talk to her. Or I want to talk to her and I want to see her again. Like that little space, that 1%, the boiling water into steam makes the giant difference in your ability to capture someone's attention, 
someone's pursuit and someone's heart. Step five is now that you have this going for yourself, now that you have the magnet that's grown, now that you have the stance of gratitude, of aliveness, of passion, then learn to set boundaries with grace. Boundaries about what it takes for someone to have sex with you. Boundaries about what it takes for someone to go on a date with you. What questions must he be able to answer for you to feel like you're not wasting your time? What needs to happen for you to touch someone and connect with him physically? What are the boundaries of respect that you have of your time? When you're clear on what you need to move things forward in different steps and you're connected to the strongest part of your magnet, then you can set boundaries with grace, meaning you're confident, you're detached from the outcome, meaning you can set a boundary, and if a guy chooses to step up, great, he wins and you win. If he chooses to step down, he may be losing something, but you win because you can move on and connect with somebody else. The thing that doesn't happen is the sideways stepping where he's not doing things in a way that make you feel excited or proud of yourself, but he continues having your time and energy. Now, the graceful part of it comes from, instead of saying, you're doing this wrong, is this doesn't work for me. As long as you understand that there's an abundant world, if a man you're connecting with, that you set something in motion, that you need to be able to continue the conversation, the connection, the pursuit, if it doesn't take place, then you can step into that abundant universe and connect with somebody else who will want to do it. The last step is you let him earn a space in your heart. Men feel compelled to pursue women who they invest time and energy in. That means that you need to let them step up, give you compliments, add value to your life. When you let a guy add value to your life, he feels a stronger connection with you. There's a vulnerability that needs to take place in your heart for him to step up. But there's also the him doing things to understand that you're a valuable human being instead of getting the entire prize without putting in the effort because maybe he's too charming, maybe he's really good looking. Allow him to earn space in your heart. Don't play hard to get, but don't give things so easily when the guy hasn't really made an effort to connect with you. If he's the right guy for you, this will create a stronger connection and a stronger sense of pursuit from him to you. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, it would mean a lot to me if you click like and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the man you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, go to this video right here and watch it right now.